Hey guys, wanna get up to date quickly on the new features of Illustrator CC 2020? I will show you everything you need to know in this video and you can follow along by downloading the exercise files from the Millenode board included in the description below. Also, to jump to specific features, you can use the time codes listed in the same place. The coolest new feature in Illustrator CC 2020 has to be the new updated Simplify Path option. Now, this is a feature that has been available in the past, but now it became much smarter and easier to use. So let's take a look how it works. I'm going to use this example of the Twitter logo, and you can see that we have a lot of unnecessary anchor points here. So I am going to refine this by going to the object menu, choose Path, and then Simplify. Notice that I already added a custom shortcut to this because I started using it often since it's been improved. So once I click on this, it comes up with a very simplified slider with which I can increase the amount of anchor points or reduce them. And we can see also the number here showing that now it's currently only 10 points or when I'm increasing, it's going up and obviously it's getting closer to the original outline. Now, if I click on the auto simplify, it gives me the option that Illustrator suggests or recommends, which at the moment I think is around 20 points. Now, if you want to see a little bit more information than this, we can click on the additional or more options, which opens up the more familiar dialog box. But even this one has been improved. So here we can see how many points we had originally. That's 280 in this case, and the new version having 20 points. Now, the reason why I like the additional option sometimes is to be able to turn on the show original path feature. It's a shame it's not available in the simplified layout, only in the additional options. It's not a big problem. It's not something I would need all the time. But in this case, it's quite useful because I can see that there's a couple of details changed quite a lot here. But generally, the Simplify feature created a much better result in terms of amount of anchor points. And the main reason you normally want to use Simplify is because the less anchor points you have, the easier it is to handle the objects in Illustrator, but also in general, the healthier your file will be. It also reduces the file size. It also makes the file load and save faster and so on and so forth. So path simplification should always be on your mind whenever you are refining and finalizing your work. And thanks to the new updated behavior, it's faster, more efficient and easier to use. I'm going to show you a few more examples of it in this video, but let's move on to another similar option, the remove anchor point feature, which is another tool that we had in previous versions of Illustrator. But again, it's been refined in CC 2020. So the tool you can find here in the toolbar delete anchor point tool. Once you select that, you can see when you click on an anchor point, by default, the path changes. So this is not really how it should work because when we add anchor points onto a path in the past as well, it stayed the same. So the new anchor point was always nicely placed in following the original direction and curvature of the path. So this wasn't the case when you were deleting anchor points, as we already seen. Let me just show you on another one here. If I delete that, it's going to be completely different. Or if I delete this, again, the path completely changes. But luckily now we have a useful keyboard shortcut and a smarter behavior for this tool. If you hold down the shift key while having this tool selected and then you remove an anchor point, notice how much closer it remained to the original curvature. So let's try this again here. I'm not holding down the shift key now. It changes, but if I undo and hold down the shift key with the same tool, you can see it stays much closer to the original path. So in a way, this tool is similar to the Simplify path, but here you are manually removing individual anchor points and rely on the same smart algorithm to calculate the neighboring direction handles. So if you don't want to mess around removing anchor points manually, remember you can just use the Simplify path option, which will very quickly do the job for you. So even here, we can see that we could simplify this and remove additional anchor points without messing up the path. 
If I drag it all the way to the left, then it's obviously going to start struggling because now it has only three anchor points and that's just simply not enough to define the original path. Another great thing in Illustrator CC 2020 is that most of the effects got much faster. So it's a performance improvement. And I can show you this with this fairly complex illustration. And one of the things that used to take a lot is when you're using raster effects in Illustrator like Gaussian Blur or even Drop Shadow. I'm going to show you this quickly here. If I apply Gaussian Blur and I turn on the preview, I can just very quickly increase, decrease this value and and believe me, it got much faster than the previous versions. So I can even use the up and down arrows on my keyboard and almost see an animation happening at the same time. You can see how quickly it's updating to the changes within the dialog box. And it's the same if I use the drop shadow option. As an example, here again, we have the preview on. We can very quickly adjust it and it's going to update even to more complex changes like increasing and decreasing the blur effect. But coming back to this illustration, I actually have another detail here on which we can try out the simplify path option. And that is this line here. So you can see that it has quite a lot of anchor points in it. But if we use the object path simplify, it can reduce this down to two single points. So let's just take a look at this. This was the original with 13 points and then the automatic option goes down to two points and hardly any noticeable difference to be honest. But you don't have to use simplify path in this way. You can also use it on the whole illustration. So let's just take a look at this. If we have the whole illustration selected and then we use the same command, it shows us that the original amount of anchor points was 613 in this case. And with the auto option, it can simplify it down to 450. So once again, before and after subtle differences in the curvature, but generally a much healthier illustration is what we are getting. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. The coolest new feature introduced in the previous version in CC 2019 was Freeform Gradient and now it's available with the recolor artwork option. So let me show you how this works. Here with this illustration, we have a freeform gradient on this image. So I'm just going to select that object and the gradient tool by pressing G on the keyboard. So we can see these little points here that I can move around and we can see how it adjusts the gradient. Now, thanks to the recent update, we can have the freeform gradient selected and go to recolor artwork from the options bar. And then we can very easily adjust all the colors at the same time here. We can even use things like color harmony rules and set up maybe a complementary color palette. We can again just adjust that very quickly or we can also use saved color groups and then work with them and amend them very quickly and easily either in the edit mode or in the assign mode where you have individual colors. If you're not familiar with how to use the recolor artwork feature, we have covered this in a separate video on our YouTube channel. You can find a link to it in the description below. And I just wanted to also show you a cool technique about the freeform gradient that I discovered. When you are working with compound parts, especially, sometimes the freeform gradient doesn't work as you expect it. So in this case, I have this compound path selected and I click on the freeform gradient. You can see it creates these points, but when I select a point, it suddenly disappears. The same thing happens if I just click and create a point, start moving it around, it just disappears. So this is happening mainly, I think, because of the compound path, which has subtracted shapes as well and also more complex outlines. So it's made up of not a single path, but multiple paths. 
And the easiest way to resolve this is to switch the actual shape back to a normal fill color. And instead of using the freeform gradient on the compound path directly, you can use the compound path instead as a clipping mask. So I'm just going to draw quickly a rectangle and I'm going to apply the freeform gradient on this. So using G to switch to the tool, then select the gradient and I'm just going to move these points around, maybe double click on this, change that color a bit and we can also maybe introduce a different color here just so we have a bit of variety. Now I'm going to move this behind the object so using command or control shift square brackets I can send it all the way to the back. Now I can select both of them together and then use command or control 7 to create the clipping mask. In this case the compound path is going to be the clipping mask itself but within that we have the freeform gradient applied on that rectangle and the advantage of this is not only that we now can work freely and without any issues with the gradient but also the fact that we can move these points outside of the boundaries. So because we created this bigger rectangle these points can move freely even outside of the edges of the object which wouldn't be the case if you just have a normal shape like here where I move these points around as soon as they go outside I let go the point is just going to disappear so we lose that part of the freeform gradient. So this is not new in CC 2020 I just thought I'd show you this useful workaround whenever you work with freeform gradients. If you ever work with text in Illustrator you probably wonder why they don't have spell check. Luckily in CC 2020 this has been introduced and it works almost exactly the same as in InDesign and Photoshop. So all you have to do is to go into the edit menu and under spelling now we have auto spell check. Once you turn that on it immediately highlights all the issues in the text within your Illustrator file as long of course they are not turned into outlines. So while they are still editable text this will come up and then we can also right click to get the recommended or suggested changes like in this case there's one there's another one here for communicate and I can also manually change these of course. Auto spell check by default is not turned on so you have to do this manually go through the menus enable it and then it's just going to save you time and make sure that you're not leaving mistakes in your illustrations. And last but not least we also have another really useful improvement in Illustrator CC 2020 and that is the background save option. Now again we had Photoshop working like this for a while but luckily now we have the same thing in Illustrator. So this means whenever you are using the file save or save as commands you won't have to wait around and looking at the progress bar it's all going to happen in the background. So it just says saving here on the top and it allows you to continue working on the same file or even open up another document while the saving is happening in the background. Believe me this can save you a lot of time especially when you're working with big robust illustrator files. It's important to mention though that this currently only works with the native file format so illustrator documents and it won't work with EPS or PDF files. Thanks a lot for watching like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.